The start of the semifinal round of this Bellator season six 170 pound tournament. Here's Michael Williams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your first welterweight semifinalist ready to make his way to the cage, Brian the Beast Baker. A record of 17 and three in pro MMA for Brian the Beast Baker, but this is just his second fight outside of 185 pounds. His first was last month in the quarterfinal round of this season six welterweight tournament. Baker winning a split decision versus Carlos Pereja. He did not look beast-like in that performance. He certainly didn't. I thought whoever turned it on that third round was gonna win it. He got a takedown with 30 seconds left, but you know, just wasn't active, wasn't his normal self. I don't I, I don't think he had adjusted to the weight cut. Let's see if he has for this fight, because he's gonna need it. Baker said that, that he was always a small middleweight, walked at about 190 to 195, so not much of a cut to 185. The first severe weight cut of his career, and he said he felt really weak in the cage. I know welterweights that walk at 200. That's not rare at all, and he has to, you know, hang with those beasts. And the thing is, if you're not used to that weight cut, it takes so much out of you. Have to see what adjustments he's made, and it hasn't been a long time. That's important. Right there. Look at me. The thing about the Bellator tournament, you had to make weight you know, roughly three times in three months. That is not easy when you don't have that cutting experience. And Brian Baker said, I still don't feel totally comfortable yet cutting down to welterweight. He thinks it will come with experience, but he said, I don't have this mastered yet. Not much of a learning curve here in Bellator. He doesn't have it mastered now. Gee, he's only taken on Ben Saunders, you know, who's an amazing fighter at this division. I and mean, if you have the cut master, this is a tough guy to fight. So he's gonna need all his physical tools. Welcome to the big leagues. No easy fights in Bellator. And now, ready to make his way to the cage, the second welterweight semifinalist, ladies and gentlemen, Ben Killery Saunders. One of the biggest personalities in all of MMA, Ben Saunders. Very charismatic and very introspective at the same time when it comes to analyzing his fights and his opponents. This is a guy who loves to fight. This is fun to him. There's nothing he would rather be doing than getting in the cage to take on another guy. I mean, this guy whose enthusiasm spills over to the fans, to us as commentators. You love watching him, love being a part of the fights because he loves being there. Ben Saunders, the runner-up in Bellator season five welterweight tournament last fall, facing Brian Baker, the runner-up in Bellator season two middleweight tournament in the spring of 2010. Entering this fight, Ben Saunders told us, when I go to a fight, I want to see violence, I want to see blood, and I want to see somebody get effed up. At the end of the day, if one of my fights ends without a finish, I feel I have not done my job. He's in there painting happy little trees with dudes' faces. At the same time, Ben Saunders, though, sees himself as a martial artist and as a technician. He talked about the fact that he has to be ultra-technical against Brian Baker, Brian Baker, who he said is a very wild, in his word, not ours, a goofy-style fighter. That's uh, true, he has a staccato kind of style, very difficult to adjust to. He needs to feel that out, get his timing and his range in the first round, that is key. The winner advances to Bellator Season 6 Welterweight Tournament Championship. Ryan Baker versus Ben Saunders. Jimmy, our tale of the tape. You see here the records of both fighters. Impressive, 17 and three, 13, four and two. But Brian Baker, only his second fight at 170 pounds. Ben Saunders, 
170 pounds. He's a welterweight fighter. He's used to exceeding at this weight class. Let's go back up to Michael Williams. Tonight here at Casino Rama Home, a big time excitement. Bellator Fighting Championship now presents the semi-final round of the welterweight tournament. Set for three five-minute rounds. First, the red corner. At six foot three, weighing in at 171 pounds even. The season two middleweight tournament finalist, now a welterweight, brings 17 professional victories, just three defeats. From Victorville, California, he fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Brian the Beast Baker. And across the cage, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner at six foot three, weighing in at 171 pounds. The season five welterweight finalist as a professional brings 13 wins, four losses with two draws. Fighting out of Orlando, Florida, Ben Killaby Sundays. And the third man inside the cage referee, Big John McCarthy. Ben. Jerry went over the rules in the back. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Fight clean, fight hard, fight fair. If you want to touch gloves, touch them out. Step back as we start. In the semifinal round of all Bellator tournaments, elbows to the head are not allowed. There you see Brian Baker. He's in the red right, trunks. You ready? His you opponent, ready? Ben Zero. Saunders, is in the black trunks. Round number one. John McCarthy is the referee. Well, we're seeing it. Brian Baker, that kind of herky-jerky style. Inside kick by Saunders. Can Ben Saunders time him properly and not get caught? Saunders missing with the kick. It's a guy that's hard to prepare for in the gym. Side kick there attempted by Baker did not land. Saunders looking for this is, in the knee. Now this is where Saunders is so effective. Baker looking for the single leg. One thing is he's not used to taking on welterweights that are as tall as he is. Both guys six foot three. Take down by Baker. Saunders in good position here to get back up. Someone is cut. I see blood on the leg Don't grab it, ben. of Ben Saunders. He's in Kimura position here. Baker looking for the inside trip. Can't find it. Good base, good defense as he holds wrist control for Ben Saunders. Saunders so good at using that, using his length. You know, controlling wrists, weird angles. <laughs> Great rubber guard. He's good at using his, his body type. But once again, not used to taking on someone his height. Body lock held by Saunders, then the knee, another knee. Nice knee. For the first time on television, go inside the tactical planning and covert action of America's police. From the creators of Cops, Spike presents the new original series, Undercover Stings, premiering this Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern time, only on Spike. A flying triangle by Ben Saunders. To try and pull that head down. Does oh. not have it locked Uma yet. Plata. Uma Plata attempt by Saunders. Baker trying to punch his way out, and he does. Good up kick. Two submission attempts by Ben Saunders. Right hand, then the left, and the left again by Baker. But look at the pace they're setting. He's making Brian Baker have to work very hard. Those were good ground and pound shots. But he's making Baker set a very high pace, testing, I think, if he's, you know, if he's gotten better at the weight cut. Now going for the guillotine. To the triangle. That was a jump guillotine attempt by Saunders, not a takedown by Brian Baker. Old school MMA from a huge MMA fan and historian, Ben Saunders. Push kick to the chest by Saunders. Baker's trying to, trying to stay tenacious on top. Trying to be heavy, missing with the right, missing with the hammer fist, lands with that hammer fist. Problem is he's dealing with a guy with dangerous ground and pound. Oh, beautiful triangle! Locked on by Saunders and now looking to finish. That is tight. That's a money triangle now going to the armbar. Armbar switch, double trouble. The problem is you have to commit to one or the other. And, and he's Baker out. defends both. In a 
huge ovation from this sold-out casino Rama crowd. That's some unorthodox submissions, but that is bread and butter. Triangle to the armbar. He felt Brian Baker was slipping out and transitioned to the armbar. But Jimmy, I know in general you really don't like double trouble. You say commit to one or the other. That's true. Well, you see a lot of guys get out. You switch to the armbar, they get out of the triangle, you triangle back to the triangle, they slip out, and every time you transition, it gives your opponent a chance to get out. Booker staying on top, trying to move the side control. I think one of the mistakes Ben Saunders made against Raul Amaya, he was a little too content to play off his ground game. The problem is Brian Baker, a much heavier puncher when it comes to his ground and pound. Doesn't want to play on the ground and get beaten up. Baker was pushed off by Ben Saunders and goes right back in. Wide base held by Ben Saunders. 55 seconds remaining and what thus far has been a really entertaining round num number one of this first welterweight tournament semifinal. That's why this crowd exploded. Now they are hushed, just waiting for the next flurry from these fighters. Let's go. Love fights like this. A lot of different positions traded. Both guys really going for it. See the wrist control held by Saunders. As long as my turn to turn for the Kimura. Brian Baker trying to take his back. Already has one hook in. Baker did tell us ground and pound over submission attempts. I think that's a good idea. Well, Saunders has good. such good transitions. Don't want to get caught trying to scramble with that guy. Submission attempts by Ben Saunders and a lot of strikes from the top position by Brian Baker. More shots now from Baker from a very unorthodox position. Good work, Eddie. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Hey, don't stay on that Kimura too long when he's got your hips wide. Defend the takedown. He's tired, okay? I know you're feeling it, but think about how tired he is right now, okay? I know you're feeling it, all right? Use your right hand in circle. All he's trying to do is take you down, all right? Deep breath, deep breath. He can't survive too many more of those triangles, all right? Nice deep breath. Use your right hand. Keep this hand up, all right? He's going to come out just crazy and try to get you down, all right? I need you to go out there. I need you to put a smile on your face and go out and have fun, all right? Use your right hand on his face, okay? Right hand in this kick. Right hand in that kick. This is the 21st pro MMA fight for that man, Brian Baker, against that man, Ben Saunders. Here we go to round number two. And for Baker, 21st pro MMA fight, just his second outside of the middleweight division. Baker told us last month in his quarterfinal round split decision win in the season six welterweight tournament versus Carlos Pereja. He just did not feel that strong physically. He felt that he started to weaken in rounds two and three. And he also told us very honestly, very tellingly, he still does not think he has this weight cut to 170 figured out fully. And one thing is, Ben Saunders, like I said, made him fight at a very high pace in that opening round. <laughs> And his style, you know, Brian Baker, one of the reasons he's so hard to time is that constant movement. He's always moving every part of his body. That takes a lot of energy. But he's doing well in the opening part of the second round, throwing a lot of strikes. Saunders definitely felt that the longer this fight progressed, oh, good left hand. he takes the big left hand from Baker, he would have more and more cardio advantage. Well, right now, in the start of this second round, he's getting out worked. Good left hands by Brian Baker. Big shots, lefts and rights by Baker. Saunders is smiling at him, but you got to make your opponent stop throwing. You got to give him a reason to curtail his offense. Right now, he isn't doing that. The straight left hand by Saunders now trying to walk down Brian Baker. <laughs> Baker back to the clinch. Ooh. Baker did tell us he thought that he would be definitely stronger of the two, and he really wanted to work a lot of clinch game. Unusual for a Ben Saunders opponent who's known for his devastating clinch game. Yeah, well, the thing is, is that you see, when they're in this tie clinch, ooh, Baker changes position and turns it into a body lock position. He's able to do that because he's just as tall as Ben Saunders. Knee by Saunders. Body lock held by Saunders. Ooh. Gorgeous takedown. Going for the outside switch. A lot of weight on there by Ben Saunders. Going to the cross face. Baker back to his feet. Baker looking for an inside trip, can't find it. Knee by Baker. 
Hip Hop Squares is a fresh spin on the iconic game show Hollywood Squares. Some of the biggest names in music and entertainment turn this game show into a party. Hip Hop Squares premieres May 22nd at 11 p.m. Eastern, only on MTV2. Ben Saunders now looking like he's sneaking in for a guillotine. Doesn't have it cinched, but holding the guillotine position. Now he's trying to cinch it in, and Baker just like that pops his head free. Big uppercuts in the counter knee, and another counter knee by Saunders. Here we go. Baker missing with that one, too. I'm surprised. Baker in this second round, he's the one initiating. Looks tired now, though. Oh, good knee! Straight onto Baker's chin from the knee of Saunders. How many guys can knee a six foot three dude in the chin without pulling his head down, but he just did it. Shot now to the single leg for Baker. You see what Baker's go-to is when things are going his way. Clinch, put him up against the fence. Make it about size and strength. I think he thinks he has that advantage on Ben Saunders. I agree, he's physically a little bit bigger. It's one of the reasons he had, he's had trouble with food. It's one of the reasons he had trouble with the cut. Also, a judo black belt who likes that range. And there's an outside trip. Nicely done on the outside trip. Mission control now held by Ben Saunders. Going to rubber guard. So few guys, Ben Saunders' length, that have his flexibility. A hammer fist there from the bottom by Saunders. Short left hammer fist by Baker from the top. Any strike from the top is better. You don't want to trade shots when you're the guy on the bottom. But that's just what Ben Saunders is doing. Left hand from Baker and another. Saunders continues to throw from the bottom. And continues to smile. And Baker now putting it on Saunders a little bit. This is what I'm talking about. Ben Saunders a little too content to play on the bottom a lot of the time. Baker right to side control, trying to step over now and trap the arm. He's thinking crucifix. Saunders now trying to cage walk. 20 seconds remaining in round two. See Baker again trying to step over and trap the arm. Looking for the American on the right arm. Right hands now by Brian Baker. More right hands by Baker from sight control. The end of round two. Strong finish by Brian the Beast Baker. There is Megan Baker, Brian Baker's wife. She's due with their first child September 4th. I need another fantastic one. Like Blow it. Other side. Okay. Very light. There you go. Nice. Water. Two rounds to nothing. All right. Two rounds to nothing. You see, take a look at that second round. Some nice strikes by Brian Baker, especially that left hook that got through the guard a few times. You see Ben Saunders answering back with some knees to the body, but a lot of throwing in that round by Brian Baker. I liked his energy in that second round. Beautiful takedown, landed some good ground and pound, and a very strong finish. All in all, a very good round for Brian the Beast Baker. We heard Brian Baker's corner tell him two rounds to nothing, that he's ahead. Jimmy, how do you see this on your unofficial scorecard? I professionally disagree. I have it one to one. Good. I gave Brian Baker that Good. last round. Get on. Last round, gentlemen. The third and final round of this opening welterweight tournament semifinal. The winner through to this season six 170 pound tournament championship. He is the pacing. He threw a lot more than Ben Saunders. Push kick by Baker. Inside kick by Baker. Saunders said he had to be more technical. Do you think he's been? No, he hasn't been active enough. That's been his problem. Oh, nice knee. Good knee to the jawline by Saunders. Not saying he hasn't been technically sound, he just hasn't been active enough. That was his problem in that second round. Saunders said clearly he felt he would have the advantage if this fight went to round three. We are in round three. Baker with the right hand. 
Right to the body. Inside knee by Baker. Saunders looking to turn. Problem is, every second he's up against the fence and Brian Baker's putting pressure on him. A, it wears him down, and B, he's winning the fight in the eyes of the judges. Saunders was just looking and talking in his corner. A lot of pressure being applied by Brian Baker. Is he driving forward? Good base held by Saunders, and a takedown by Baker on the ankle pick. Look at this good pressure by Brian Baker. Saunders trying to get back to guard. Walking his legs high, looking for the armbar. Saunders, a very active guard, a very active bottom game. This from the bottom by Saunders. He's got to pull the head down. If he wants to commit to this triangle, he has to break Brian Baker's posture down. Or he can angle and go for the arm bar on the right arm. Baker. Brian Baker loses it. Baker holding straight posture on both knees. Baker trying to drive in. The problem is I'm not seeing a lot of urgency from Ben Saunders on the bottom. He's not trying to push him off and get up. Problem is that you're losing rounds. You're on the bottom like this. Jimmy, you always say that in modern MMA, if you're on the bottom, you're losing. Almost always, unless you're really, really busy and your opponent isn't doing anything on top of it. Brian Baker landed some good ground and pound, and Ben Saunders not coming close with any submissions. Good body shot with the right hand by Baker. And the left to the body. You see Saunders still throwing from the back. Baker in a puncher's base, driving forward again. Under two minutes left, if Brian Baker can stay here, he can win this fight. Saunders trying to sit up and through. Baker not getting through with that left hand, diving back in. You know, Saunders said he would have the advantage in the third round. Right now, Brian Baker looks like the fresher fighter. 90 seconds remaining in this third and final round. Sneaky right hand by Baker, that found the mark. Saunders again looking to his corner. Saunders to his feet. He's got to make something happen right now. Only a minute left. Brian Baker has been in control this entire round. Big slam! Big takedown, big slam indeed from Brian Baker. Instead of going for an inside or an outside trip, hooked the leg and went for the full takedown. That takes a lot of physical strength. Well, that's what he's got at 170. Baker knows all he has to do is stay here, land some shots, wait for the bell. Only 40 seconds left. Don't look for him to get overly aggressive or do anything stupid. Left hand by Baker. Saunders spending a lot of round three on his back. I cannot hear what Ben Saunders is saying. Might be talking to the ref, I don't know, but hey, Brian Baker is doing enough to, to, to keep it from getting stood up. Don't expect the ref to help you out. Spinning back kick there by Baker. And Saunders said Baker does some, quote, goofy things. I think he meant something just like that. That was almost a Thiago Santos special. Gotta be careful with those. Closing seconds of this fight. Axe kick attempt by Baker. Holding top position, and there's the bell. A great performance by Brian the Beast Baker. I thought he dominated those last two rounds. Let's see what the judges say. Brian Baker versus Ben Saunders. Welterweight tournament semifinal number one goes the distance. In round one, Ben Saunders going for that flying triangle, went for a lot of different submissions, good transitions. Excellent stuff on the ground, as always, from Ben Saunders, but could not get the, the finish. Round number two, Brian Baker unloaded on the feet, was much more aggressive, stayed on top in a lot of that second round, kept the pressure on. You see here Ben Saunders answering back with some nice knees to the body, but on the feet, I thought it belonged more to Brian the Beast Baker.
also finished strong in that second round, able to pass the guard on top with some ground and pound. Round number three, exclusively the domain of Brian Baker on top, landing his ground and pound. Not as many submission attempts from Ben Saunders, much more defensive throughout that third round. Jimmy on your unofficial scorecard. 29-28, Brian the Beast Baker. I gave him the last two rounds. Let's see how the three judges for the province of Ontario scored it on their official cards. Here's Michael Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the uh, distance, we'll go to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, Jason Rogers, scores the fight 29 to 28, while judges David Terrien and Benoit Roussel both see the fight 30 to 27, all for the winner by unanimous decision. Now advancing to the welterweight tournament championship, Brian the Beast Baker. Jimmy is with the victor as his wife Megan looks on, Brian Baker. I'm here with your winner and your first welterweight tournament finalist, Brian the Beast Baker. How did that fight feel physically as opposed to your last fight? It seemed like you had a ton of energy from bell to bell. And uh, each fight I'm building more and more, you know, second fight at welterweight, so more and more. How did you feel in that first round, Ben Saunders? Very tricky rubber guard, very tight with the triangle. How did it feel in that first round when he was going for those submissions? Were you confident? Um, I'm always confident in submissions. I mean, I've been in a lot of them, and I haven't get tapped once. So I'm very confident in my submission game. Um, I need to work on not getting in on that. Now, of course, on the other side of the bracket, Dave Rickles versus Carl Amasu. How interested are you going to be in, as an observer in that fight? Oh, man, it's for the finals, you know. I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to get back to camp and be more ready even th more than this fight. So I'd like to thank Gamma Labs for the power uh, and strengthening me and getting me through this. Uh, I'm two years in remission, everybody. Press on, press on, everybody. Two years. The Lord is my strength. He gives me everything I need. Lord. Thank you, Lord. And your first welterweight finalist, give it up for him, Brian the Beast Baker.